All right, so let's get into it. So this is going to be the video that I'm going to put some VFX in. I might put like something here, like this box with the molecular script and particles floating around in the box, what I'm going to put, but I know I'm going to put something in this doorway. That's why I tried to keep this as center as possible. We're looking at our VFX pipeline pick poster here. Again, I got this from uh, Peter. His link will be down in the description if you guys want to grab this poster. So our first task is to prepare our image sequence convert video files to images sequence for consistency and easy uh, transport. So we're going to do that first. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go straight to the video editing tab. What I'm going to do is go ahead and bring in my image. All right. So I got my video imported in here. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1080 by 1920. And it was at 100 percent. Frame rate was uh, 30 FPS. Now the length is a little bit longer than what's standard here. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and extend that all the way to the end frame 376. I'm gonna put that 376 at the end. Aspect ratio is wrong here. So I'm gonna press R90 and then boom, there it is. It's ready to go. And that's pretty much everything that we need to do. Uh, the color space is already set up by default when I use this, this preset here. That's why I like to use our preset. Go to color management, RGB standard, right? All right, and then I'm gonna render out my frames. Make sure you save them into their own folder, which I didn't set up. <laughs> and before we render this out, we need to change here. I'm gonna change it from video to, I'm gonna do PNG sequences here, and that should be ready to go. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and render animation. All right, so we've got our image sequence complete. Now we're going to set up our, our shot in Blender, basically opening a movie clip editor, set your scene frames, prefetch, uh, make proxies and all that if desired. So let's get straight into that. All right, so I'm in a new tab here. I'm in the VFX tabs. If you go to new VFX, boom, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and import my footage. All right, got my footage imported. And let's go ahead and change our settings. I'm gonna switch this to cycles. I'm going to switch to GPU and I'm going to scroll down here to film and select transparent. Change my, my resolution here. Uh, 1920 at the top was 1080. Frame rate was 30 FPS. And our range, we're going to go ahead and change that set frame range prefetch. Okay, boom. So it's all in there and we're ready to go. Now we need to figure out what type of motion do we have going here now there are basically three basic types to kind of try to keep in mind here if we go back to our chart here we have perspective change camera moves around and rotates nodal pan camera rotates in place and a static shot no camera movement obviously we don't have this static shot nodal pan we do have some rotation but we are moving to the side so I think this best is going to be a perspective change for us here. And then if we follow the arrow, that's going to bring us into Blender uh, Tracker. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. So again, if I look at my footage, I clearly see we're moving to the side. We're not just standing still. And there is this massive perspective going on here. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to change. Let's go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. I'm going to click on these presets. I'm going to choose blurry footage, which I just is not blurry, but I tend to get better results using that motion model. I'm going to choose perspective. I'm going to hit normalize tracking extras. I'm going to put my correlation to 0.9. The little tip I got from CJ matter. Basically, your, your trackers are going to be 90 percent sure they're solid. So that's a good thing here. And then another technique I learned from Ian Herbert. Let's go ahead and just pull that up for at the moment is I'm just going to ram track <laughs> what I call ram track. So I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to go detect the features. Click this tab here and then I'm going to go put this down to like 0.1. Right, maybe even half of that 0.05 just to cram as many tracks in there. And the distance I'm just going to slowly bring down the distance to get more tracks in there. OK, so we got all these tracks here. We got a lot of tracks. And I'm going to go ahead and just track forward. If you don't know the shortcut, it's control T or you can press this button here. I use shortcuts all the time. So I'm just going ahead and hit control T. Click on there one time, deselect everything. Then I'm going to hit detect features again, and I'm going to track backwards. I'm going to press control shift T and track backwards. All 
All right, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna jump to the middle. I'm gonna go to about like frame 130 and I'm gonna do the same thing again, detect features and I'm gonna track backwards, control shift T. All right, and then I'm gonna go to frame 130 again and I'm gonna go detect features. And I'm gonna track forward control T. All right, good. So this is a little hard way, not hard, but I'll say we're just ramming it. It's like, you know, the correlation is 9.9. .9, so a lot of tracks won't stick at 0.9. So that's why I'm ramming so many tracks in. And we're trying to do from the beginning to the end, to the end, to the beginning, middle, to get a lot of overlapping happening. And I can already see this is turning out to be so far pretty clean. Look at the, look at the pattern there is very clean. We got some outliners, which we're going to clean out here shortly. Make sure we save our file. From here, let's go ahead and start setting things up and see what kind of uh, tracking number we can get here. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the solve tab. I'm going to hit keyframe because we want some keyframes. I'm going to hit focal length, optical center, and ratio distortion. I think that is about it from there. Let's go ahead and see what our first number is going to be here. All right. So, ooh, not bad. Not bad on this one. We lucked out and got a 1.42 on the first track. Now, the main thing here, we need to make sure we this blue line is all the way through our track, okay? That's And then the flatter this blue line is, the cleaner the track's going to be. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clean out these, these, these ones here. And I'm going to hit save before we do anything. And all right, I'm going to go ahead and just clear out these rogue ones right off the back. All right, and just from there, I'm going to go ahead and hit a resolve from here. Okay, and prime example, that totally jacked us. Look at that. Look at we're at 1,000. So, obviously, I'm going to hit undo undo i'm going to bring all of those tracks back matter of fact i'm just going to do this i'm going to go back to revert to last save first did it change it revert uh, i don't think it did it let's try that again solve all right so obviously i screwed myself on this one here what i think it might be is the keyframes might have changed so let's go ahead and it really shouldn't have changed that much just from deleting those few so what I'm going to do is going to set my keyframes to 88 to something like that to 112. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. Now we're back on track. So yeah, sometimes you got to fidget with these keyframes. I don't know the exact math behind that, but I think is basically you got to find what has the most parallax between the two points. So I just kind of find out when these things stretch the farthest, like, okay, there's a big stretch. There's a big stretch. So I just get a, a point in between there. So good, we're at it. We're doing good now. So we're at point eight. Now what we're gonna do here is do some additional cleanup. Now we wanna see our dope sheet here on the top. And oh well, yeah, we got 18, 17. Yeah, we're gonna really get a good solve here. We're gonna clean this up here. Go to cleanup. And I'm gonna go anything that's over 10. I want you to delete that track. And it's gonna delete anything that's over a 10. And let's go ahead and resolve. First, let's save again. Now I'm gonna resolve. Real good. 0.64 the main thing we need to make sure this blue line is all the way through and it is super smooth i could stop there but let's let's get let's push it like we got some six i'm gonna go to four here let's go anything that's over a four delete it resolve okay 0.52 blue line is still in the end that's good let's go lower let's see if we can do anything above three anything that's over three clean track solve oh looking really nice let's go ahead and hit save again now we're at a four point Point four. See anything over a two? We're just gonna rinse repeat this cycle. You can't go too far. Eventually, this blue line will start to separate and get spotty. Then that's when you know you don't have enough tracks throughout the whole sequence. Clean tracks. Okay. Point four. We're still hanging tough. We got our blue line end to end. Let's see. I got a lot of tracks left here, right? Let's see if we can go to anything above a one. Three nine. That's not bad. Most people would have stopped a long time ago at five or six or seven, right? I want to push it. I want to see how far can we go. Go ahead and go anything that's over point eight. We're gonna have to get smaller with our increments now too. Point eight. Clean. Let's first save this again. Okay. Anything over point eight. Clean out. Okay. Point three seven. Not bad. Let's cut that. Let's go to point six. Clean tracks. Ooh, a lot of tracks went away that time. Okay. Three, five. We're still set. Blue line is still solid. Okay, I'm going to hit save. And I think I'll probably stay there, but I want to break it. I want to see how far I can go. I want to break it this time. Let's go down to 0 0.5. 0 0.34. Blue line is still full to full. Let's go 0.2. Ooh, that was, I don't, that we just cleared too many tracks. Undo. 
Yeah, that was way too much. Let's go, okay, point four. Because in reality, we only need eight tracks on screen at any given time. So there always has to be eight tracks on, on screen. Okay, three, four. Did I hit solve? I don't know if I hit solve. Let me hit it one more time. Okay, three. Let's go point three. Point two, three. The blue line is still intact. No holes in the blue line. That's important to make sure there's no holes in the blue line. Otherwise, it won't work. I'm going to hit... I'm going to save a different version on this one. I'm going to go save. Now, that's really low. Let's see if we can go even lower. 0.2. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go 0.25. That got us down to a 1.9. Wow. 1.9. I mean, 0 0.9. 0 0.19. Everything is a point. I think that's pretty low. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can solve it here. I'm going to see if I can... Uh, now I took away so many tracks. Do I even have an origin point? Set up our tracking scene. I think I'm going to, because again, I wanted something in this doorway. The downside of that, I don't really have too many tracks to even choose from. You know what? Just for the sake of it, I'm just going to use this one. It's pretty centered. We'll go ahead and say, that's going to be my origin point. Ding. And then go ahead and hit set background, set scene. We do need a ground plane on this one. Some points for our ground plane. I'm going to go one, two, three three let's try those ones that'll be my floor and then the distance uh, i don't even know what the distance was so i'm gonna have to eyeball this one that's where we should get a good measurement like a pace off i could have should have like paced off how far the distance was from here to here but i didn't so let's just eyeball this one this pathway let's go to two set scale that might be okay 1.5 scale again you figure this box here is one meter GZ1 is about the size of an average human. And if a human walks in, and literally for me to walk into this gate, it's not as high as you think. In Japan, the doors are not as high as they are like in America. I possibly could say this might be okay. Let me go 1.6. What I'm going to do is go up here and make a new scene. I'm going to go to general, to layout. I'm going to go up here and turn on motion tracking. We need to set up our camera. All right, guys. So we got everything in here, and I was going to get our camera rotated around. But one thing, if you hit play, you notice that the track is not sticking and it should be because we had an extremely high solve error, 1.2, right? The problem is this used to baffle me every time I did vertical video. This only happens with vertical video. It doesn't line up. So what you need to do is click on the camera. Make sure you got the camera selected, click on the camera and scroll down to where it says camera. Scroll this down and it says auto. You want to change that to horizontal. Boom, let's see what happened with big change there. Now, if we hit play, Boom, look at that track. Locked in solid, right? There, there's our, our point one two of a track solve error, right? Okay, so good. That's pretty much the track, right? It is nice and solid. Again, I can go back and click on my camera and then change this to 3D cursor and then hit R, rotate on the Z. Now I can, you know, line these grids up to my to my liking here. I'm gonna kind of do something like that, right? And boom, there it is. Now the downside, you can see here, there's all of our tracking markers. The downside with killing so many tracks is like, now it's kind of really hard to make out our geometry. Like I know this is the street right here and we know this could be one of the pillars, right? So the benefit of keeping a lot of tracks is that we can do a lot of, you know, recreation of the scene using those, using those trackers, those tracker markers kind of a downside. I guess if you really wanted that, you could go back and add those trackers in there. Typically, this is basically how I would just quickly do this. 